I'm going to demonstrate how to use the WebSafe software. And you can get to this by going to cloudcoin.co forward slash bank.html. And this web application should work on any device, including the iPhone. So I'm showing you today how it would look like on the iPhone. And you want to keep in mind that this is a application that works on JavaScript. And, and basically what that means is that it works locally on your device. It does not go out and use servers. I mean, it, it, it will go out and talk to the RADA and change your authenticity numbers and take ownership of cloud coins. But it does not store any data on any servers. So uh, it will store your cloud coins on your local computer or your local device. And that means that they'll basically be stored as uh, browser data, which is called local storage. And if you clear your local storage in your browser, you'll get rid of all your cloud coins. So you want to make sure you don't do that. Or if you're going to do that, you want to export your cloud coins first before you do that. So that's the big warning with this type of software. One of the things that we can do with this application is test the RADA to make sure it's there and working. So if you click the RADA button up here, uh, it'll pop out and tell you, how, uh, basically it'll echo all of the RADAs and tell you that they're there and give you a time that it takes. Now with the iPhone, sometimes you have to do this twice. Sometimes when you do it, it doesn't load it pr properly. So you've got to go back and click on the screen, do it again, and then it will tell you that the RADA is there and that everything's ready. So we want everything ready. Of course, uh, sometimes it's not going to be all ready. We have to go on without that. But um, OK, so I'm going to start by showing you how to import coins. This, what this is going to do is take coins that are foreign to you from other people, and it's going to pwn them, password own them. So it will change all of the authenticity numbers so that only you know them, and you'll be the owner. So I'm just clicking on Import. We're going to choose our files. There's two different types of files that you can choose right now. We have JPEG images, which have cloud coins embedded in them. We also have stack files. So I'm going to start by loading up a stack file. And this stack file has about six cloud coins in it right now. Once I choose the files, I then have to click Upload. And what it's going to do is it's going to go and take ownership of every single coin. And you'll see the progress as it goes along. There's a chance that it might have a fracked coin. It just so happens that none of these were fracked. It's all good. And that's a very good thing. Now if I go and I look in my safe, I should see that I have six cloud coins. And uh, so that's good. I'm going to demonstrate really quick how to deal with a fracked coin. Fracked coin is a coin that has been damaged. And so I'm going to open up a sample coin here. You'll get to see what it looks like internally. This is what a cloud coin looks like inside. There's 25 authenticity numbers. I'm just going to go and change one of these numbers. When I do that, that's going to cause that to be fracked. I'm going to change a couple of them. And uh, how about three? OK, so I've changed three of these numbers. I'm going to save them. And now when this coin goes to authenticate, there's going to be three servers that aren't going to jive correctly. So I'll go ahead and import. And I'll choose that fracked coin I just created. Upload it. So it says that the coin is fracked. And now if I go to my safe, I can see that I do have one coin that is, in fact, fracked. What this means is that, and this is completely normal and happens all the time, that the system is designed to have this happen. It just means not all of the radius uh, sentinels believe that this uh, coin is authentic. But we can call on the sentinel's friends to convince it to change its authenticity number to ours. And we do that by doing fix fracked. So I click on that. It's going to take that coin. It's going to go and talk to all of that coin's friends. And it's going to go out and, uh, and fix it right here. And uh, it goes out. It might take a little while. It will contact the RADA and the trusted servers. And it should say uh, done fixing fracked. 
when it is done. And here it's saying done fixing fragged. The, uh, the, the button will be grayed out. The coin should be moved from fragged into the good. And now if I uh, go ahead and look at my safe, I can see that uh, it is there. So that was a successful frag fix. Okay, let's take a look at how we can store our cloud coins in our mind. And so cloud coin is the first currency that you can store in your mind. And it is less secure in the fact that some kind of hacker might try to hack the RADA and get access to, to your uh, uh, cloud coin. But it's highly unlikely that that would be possible. So right now I've got six ones, or seven ones. One of them is fracked. I'm going to move these into my mind, and then I will move them from my mind. So here it says bank to mind. I'm going to click on that, and then I can choose all the coins that I want to move to my mind. I've got the choice between fracked and full. You probably do not want to move any fracked coins. You want to fix those fracks before you move them to your mind. But I'm going to move all six of my ones. So I'm clicking on all of those, and now we've got to enter three things, our username, our password, and our email. Now these are actually going to be used to create a passphrase for us and it is essential that they are case sensitive so that we are going to enter in the same thing when we uh, put them in our mind as we do when we take them out. So we have to make sure that we type the same thing. So for my username I can put a username, and it's called username for, so it's easy to remember, but you could use any kind of a phrase, as long as it doesn't start or end with a white space, like a space or an enter or a tab or something like that. So here I'm putting my username is really big, which is a passphrase, and for my password, I'm going to use another phrase, so that's another big long phrase. Now the email has to be good, and even though emails in general are not case sensitive, here they are. So I am using a email and I've added uppercase letters. You might not want to do this. If I can remember when I take it out to do to use the same case, then it works fine. So what's going to happen is that after I move the the uh, check coins to my mind it's going to send me an email and tell me the serial numbers that I put there so that I can remember which serial numbers are in my mind. But I'm going to have to remember the username, the password, and the email in order to get them out. All right, so I've got them checked. I've got my username and password and my email. I remember them and I remember the case. So I'm going to go ahead and move them to my mind. It goes through the process of uh, changing the rate so it fits that and now so long as I remember the username and the password and the email in the case of them then they are in my mind and I can see that they are now gone and if I go to my bank I can see that they are gone but if I want to in fact I just uh, you just heard that noise that's me receiving an email telling me that I have got uh, some coins in my mind and it shows me all the serial numbers so I can see what they are and if I forget what coins are or if, or if I lose my phone I can use these serial numbers to recover it. Okay so what I want to do is I want to move it from my mind to my bank. Now my cell phone right now remembers that I've got these serial numbers here. If for some reason my serial number was stolen I would have to enter them uh, recover them from the email. But um, I want to move all of these back into my bank. So go ahead and check what I want to move back. And I'm going to remember my passphrases. So my username and my passphrase. And then I'll remember my email address. And I also have to remember that I capitalized certain letters. It's very important. Okay, so now I can move from mind. When I do that, it's going to go through the process of putting them in the bank. And I can see as that process goes along. And they will either, if they're good, and I remember the username and password correctly, they'll end up 
in my bank. If they're bad, then they might end up in fract if I, if I missed a letter on my password. So uh, now I can go ahead and go back to my safe. I can see that they're now put back into my bank. So the idea behind the store in mind is simply so that you can lose your cloud coins without having to worry about them being hacked or worry about encryption because in fact your mind cannot be hacked. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the last thing that we can do with this application and that is to export the coins. And this interface is going to change, but right now when we want to import something or export something, we're going to just click on what we want to export and then we want to give it a tag. And usually we put something like uh, who it's for. So if I'm going to give these coins to Bill, I might put uh, Bill on here. Then I'm going to choose to either download it as a stack file or as images. And I'll go ahead and download this as a stack file. When I do, it's going to download onto my uh, hard drive. And if you're using an iPhone, it'll download. You'll need to put it in your iCloud storage. But uh, I can see it on my computer that it is downloaded in my downloads folder right now. There's one more thing I'd like to talk about, and that is what to do if you lose your coins. So sometimes you might accidentally delete your coins or clear your cache and all your coins will disappear. But you can check your email and you can see all of your serial numbers and you can see what you own. It's just that you don't have the authenticity numbers. So in that case, what you want to do is you want to email uh, the CloudCoin Consortium, cloudcoin at protonmail.com, and give us the serial numbers and the date that you lost them. We will file a lost coin report and you can recover those coins in two years if the date that you've got there is the last date that those coins are actually used. Please leave any questions or comments on the bottom of this video and we'll answer them for you and feel free to email us for help